Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints here in Halifax. This Sunday we are marking Women's Ministry Sunday and our guest preacher will be Debbie Feiss. Some reminders to share with all of you. Services in person take place here Sunday mornings, 8.30 and 10 o'clock. These are kind of condensed Eucharist services designed to have us uh, spend no more than an hour in, in uh, the building. Those wishing to attend can confirm a seat using the Eventbrite service on the Cathedral Church's website. You'll find that under the Information tab. If you have any difficulties registering or figuring out how that works, just call the Cathedral office or send an email to cathedralchurch at eastlink.ca. We also meet Wednesday mornings in person, 7.30 a.m. and Fridays at noon. And on Wednesdays at noon, there is an in-person meditation. Those don't require advanced booking as our numbers so far have been manageable there. Evensong returns online this afternoon as part of our Sundays at Four series, so you will find it posted on our website. Also online, we offer Sunday School via Zoom. We've now figured out the technology so that we can have everyone gather to start, and then we can divide off into different rooms depending on ages. That takes place Saturdays at 4. If you'd be interested or know someone that might be, please send an email again to cathedralchurch at eastlink.ca for information on how to connect. Mondays at 6.30, we host an online workshop on prayer, learning and doing various forms of prayer, and Thursdays at 6.30, an online meditation program. These utilize the Zoom format, so please send an email to prayasyoucan3 at gmail.com for information to connect. And just as we are approaching the season of Lent, we will have Ash Wednesday services. There'll be a notice going out about that. They will be both in person and recorded for online watching. And we've also added morning prayer. Every, Monday, every morning, Monday through Saturday, they are posted as early as 5 a.m. So you have all kinds of opportunity in the morning or throughout the day to tune in and find a reflection, meditation, uh, opportunity there as well. We are also recognizing African Heritage Month this month, and this year the theme is Black History Matters. Listen, learn, share, and act. Recognize, recognizing the legacy of people of African descent in both Canada, but in particularly here in Nova Scotia. We have over 50 historic African Nova Scotian communities with a long, deep history that dates back over 400 years. I would encourage you to go to the Black Cultural Center of Nova Scotia website where you'll find not only a video of the launch of this year's program, but also all kinds of information of our history. One of the unique persons I discovered there was a man by the name by the name of Matthew da Costa. He was of African ancestry and lived in Europe and accompanied many of the early uh, explorers to what was referred to then as the New World. And part of his significance was he had a tremendous gift for languages. And it was said that he could speak fluently Dutch, English, French, Portuguese, and when he came to Nova Scotia, learned Mi'kmaq. And as, as a result of that, was very influential in bridging the kind of cultural gaps between different peoples. He is recorded as having been working out of Port Royal here in Nova Scotia as early as 1608 and accompanied some of the explorers such as uh, Samuel de Champlain. So just an example of some of the remarkable history you can find. Again, that's on the website of the Black Culture Center of Nova Scotia. A moment with the young people this morning. Today's uh, Bible story is kind of a unique one. 
just make sure my other microphone is on, because it's a story about Jesus doing healings, a number of healings, which is not surprising for Jesus because we've learned how he did that, and it was certainly part of his ministry was to heal those with all manner of, of illness or concerns, anxieties, troubles. But in this particular story, he's at, at the home of one of the disciples, and the disciple's mother is ill, so he helps her uh, recover from her illness. Not really sure what that was. And then word gets out that he's there and pretty soon people start coming from all over to meet with Jesus and be healed by Jesus. And this is one of the few times in all of the Bible where we discover that Jesus got tired. Can you believe it? Sometimes all the things he had to do and always being present to people got him tired. And so we learn in this particular Bible story this morning that he goes away early in the morning to find a quiet place to be alone, which reminds us of the importance of prayer and meditation and reflection and reminds us of this. Sometimes we need, when we get tired or thirsty, we need something to drink. And there's an old expression that says, you can't drink from an empty cup. So today's Bible story is a reminder that even Jesus needed time to fill his cup again. Something for all of us to think about. Over to you, Helen. I will add my welcome to all of those who are here and to those who are at home joining us through the wonderful, I was going to say magical technology, because to me it's still magical. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. And I think I have skipped an important part where we should have been listening to a beautiful hymn, Amazing Grace. And although you can't sing out loud, you can sing inside.
That was beautiful. It would have been terrible to have missed that. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us together pray the collect of the day. Almighty God, by whose grace alone we are accepted and called to your service, strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated as we listen to Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Micah. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading of Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant it is to honor him with praise! The Lord, Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He, he gathers, gathers the, the exiles of Israel. Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power, there is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. God of, God the, of universe, the universe, Lord, Lord of life, life give, give us grace to see you in all your works, works in, in all your creatures, creatures all and all people, people and, and in, in our hearts, hearts that, that we may faithfully serve you and, and worthily praise, praise your holy, holy name, name through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, may God bless you. May the Holy Spirit be in your heart, in your mind, and on your lips as you proclaim for us the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick 
were possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place where he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Open our ears, Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills so that we may serve you now and always. Amen. Amen. Get comfy. Or as comfy as you can on those gray chairs. <laughs> Good morning and happy Sunday to you all, both here in person and to you online. I'd like to start by sharing a memory with you this morning. I remember whenever a guest came into my Grammy's kitchen, and before they had even had a chance to take off their coat or get settled in a chair, Grammy would be pouring a cup of tea from the pot on the stove and putting a plate of cookies or a sweet loaf on the table. Show of hands, how many of you are fortunate enough to have a memory like that or actually do that yourself? That's what my mother refers to as country hospitality. And we see that hospitality in today's gospel, don't we? Jesus and the four disciples, after Jesus had preached in the synagogue, and cast out an unclean spirit. Then they all go to Andrew and Simon's home, presumably to rest for the night or maybe have a meal, only to find that Simon's mother-in-law is sick in bed with a fever. Jesus takes her by the hand, lifts her up, and then she gets up and she serves them. Reading some commentaries on this passage and listening to some of my classmates at AST, this passage is often seen as an exemplar of the marginalization of women in the church, both in Jesus' time and through the centuries. For one thing, she is known only as Simon's mother-in-law. She doesn't have a name of her own. And for another, she's been ill, Jesus lifts her up, and for what? To serve the men. That in particular seems to ruffle a lot of sensibilities. But I wonder, is there another way to look at that passage? Perhaps we should look at it through the lens of hospitality and ministry, in particular, women's ministry. After all, it is Women's Ministry Sunday. As a matter of fact, Simon's unnamed mother-in-law is regarded by many biblical scholars as the first deacon. Because after receiving healing from Jesus, which broke the Sabbath, by the way, did you catch that, listening to the gospel? 
After being healed, she of her own free will and initiative gets up and offers service and hospitality to others over and above the old imperatives of the Sabbath. She has received a gift from Jesus and her response, a true diaconal response, which the disciples themselves won't understand until Easter. And her response is she then becomes a servant of the church that is gathered in her son-in-law's home. She is the first of many women who will become the backbone of the early church by offering their homes as places of worship. Let's remember the context of the first few generations of the church. <clears throat> this Jesus movement begins in daily life with small gatherings in homes. And at that time, although they didn't have much else in the way of rights and privileges, the home was the domain of the women. Without the invitation, and hospitality of these women, the early church would have had a much rockier start. The ministry of women has been vital to and implicit in the church right from the start, although very often not acknowledged. So let's do a bit of time traveling. We're gonna leave ancient Israel and we're gonna land in the mid 19th century in Europe, which actually factors into our lives here as our several generations back direct ancestors. If you were a woman in the mid 1800s, you were property. You were a commodity that could be bought sold, bartered <clears throat> for a male relative's gain, disciplined, used. And your main value lay in producing heirs or workers for your husband or master. There were exceptions, it is true, but for the most part, that was the life for the majority of women at that time. What then, at that time, do you suppose was the role of women in ministry? Well, it was much as it had always been. Help for the poor and needy, support of your local church or congregation, hospitality, education of children, and personal devotion. All of these are representative of loving service in Jesus' name, aren't they? At this point in time, though, there was another option for women. It was one of the only other socially acceptable paths for a woman other than marriage and it was the foreign mission field. The mid to late 1800s to the mid 1900s was the heyday of the foreign missionary movement, both for men and women. Many of the major denominations had women's missionary societies. Women who in their own little communities would raise funds to support women's missionaries abroad. And those little women's missionary societies in your local church communicated regularly with the missionaries abroad, thus being educated in the wider world and the other people that share this planet. And these societies also quietly advocated for and participated in education for themselves and other women. 
And in this world, in 1876, in a rural parish in Hampshire, England, a 50-year-old grandmother and a Church of England's priest's wife was concerned about the welfare and lives of the women and children in her community, particularly in the lower classes. History doesn't record this, but I wonder if the words from Micah that we heard this morning, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. I wonder if those words went through her heart and mind when she called a meeting of the parish women, a meeting that was a blending of working class and lesser gentry, which at that time would have been absolutely unheard of. And she called this meeting because she wanted to form a mutual support group that would uphold the sanctity of marriage and would form a support system for them to raise their children to be baptized soldiers of Christ and to be united together in and by prayer. Ironically, she was so nervous about speaking to this group because women of her class did not speak in public. She was so nervous about speaking to them that she asked her husband to speak for her at that first gathering. This rector's wife, Mary Sumner, also held weekly meetings with the husbands of these women. Again, absolutely unheard of for the time. And they were invited to a Bible study. But while there, she would also speak about a father's role in raising children and a husband's role in marriage. From those modest beginnings in a Hampshire rectory 145 years ago, the Mother's Union, a church-based worldwide charity organization based in the Church of England and the Anglican Communion, has 4 million members in 84 countries around the world. The focus of the Mother's Union is still supporting parents and families, whether that is through parenting support programs, numeracy and literacy programs, low-interest small business loans, family prison ministry, gender-based violence awareness, and or lobbying for government change in matters concerning families and children. The Mother's Union has a seat on the United Nations Council of Women. The Canadian Mothers Union is working towards bringing the Parent Supporting Parents program to the Canadian North. We've been working on this for about eight to ten years. And in January of 2020, before the pandemic lockdown, a training session was held in the Diocese of Moosonee to train ten Indigenous persons to be Parent Supporting Parents program facilitators. Once the restrictions are lifted, our hope is that they will get the supporting program up and running in their own communities. Mother's Union is hoping to provide another training program in a different area of the North with the input and blessing of the Council of the North. The Anglican Church women of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island have chosen the Mother's Union Parenting Program as their national fundraiser for 2020. And the monies raised will go a long way towards spreading the grassroots, culturally appropriate 
and community-based approach to parenting children in Canada's remote northern communities. Let's hear it for women's ministry. I would like to share with you Mary Sumner's personal prayer this morning. May it guide all of us in our own ministries as each of us, like Simon's nameless mother-in-law, serve in our own ways where and when we can. Let us pray. All this day, O Lord, let me touch as many lives as possible for thee. In every life I touch, do thou by thy spirit quicken, whether through the word I speak, the prayer I breathe, or the life I live. Amen. I invite you, as you are able, to stand and join with me in confessing the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the prayers of the people, you may remain standing or sit. On this uh, Women's Ministry Sunday, when we honour the ministry, particularly of the Mother's Union, and our effort in striving to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Following each petition will be the phrase, let us pray to the Lord, to introduce the response from the congregation, Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the end of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For Linda, our primate, David, our metropolitan, Sandra, our diocesan bishop, Paul, our dean and rector, Helen, our associate priest, Heather, Ray, and Maggie, our deacons, Lori, our Anglican church women chaplain, all the cathedral's honorary assistants, that they may be true and faithful servants of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all women and men in our diocese, praying especially for the women and men involved in some way with the ministry of the Anglican Church Women and Mothers' Union, all organizations in the parishes, such as the guilds, ACWs, Mothers' Union branches, for the music ministry of the cathedral, Paul, Russ, Nick, and the cathedral choristers, that with them we may all strive to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all involved with the worldwide parenting program of the Mother's Union and all the indigenous communities in the Council of the North that will benefit from the success of supporting parents' stories that matter, the current Anglican project of the Anglican Church Women in our diocese, 
a project that promotes positive relationships, supports healthy family life, however a family is configured, and advocates for a just society. For all those who have offered and continue to offer prayers and financial support for supporting parents, stories that matter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in the world, for those living with violence throughout our globe, for victims of crime, especially those who are victims of human trafficking and gender-based violence, for refugees and migrants, for all people in our society marginalized for any reason, especially missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in Canada, for all who work for justice and peace, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, for those in hospital, those awaiting surgery, those recovering from injury or sickness, those in continuing care, for those caring for the sick, for those suffering the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and all those caring for them. All those in need of our prayers, especially those for whom our prayers have been requested. Douglas, Ian, Andrew, Linda, Joe, Ed and Patricia, David and Mary, Audrey, Ollie, Pat, Pat is mentioned several times, Judy, Elizabeth, Zach, Paul, Barbara, Anne, Marilyn and Joe, Anna, Skyler, Nell, Bob, Deanna, Tim, Mildred, and those whom we remember in our hearts or are known to you alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For though all those who have passed from this life in the faith of Christ, especially the women of our diocese and Joan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and saints, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. May we follow their good example of witness and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.
gracious God, bless this water that by its intermingling with the wine it may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. your altar and proclaim your mother's days. As we give thanks for this bread and wine, gifts from God's creation, may we offer ourselves in love and service. Let us pray. God of compassion and forgiveness, receive our offering this day and make us one with him who is our peace, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God, our creator. Holy God, lover of creation, we give you thanks and praise for in the ocean of your steadfast love you hear us and place the song of your spirit in our hearts. When we turn from your love and defile the earth, you do not abandon us. Your sp spirit speaks through Hilda and Micah, through the prophets, sages and saints in every age to confront our sin and reveal the vision of your new creation. Joining in the song of the universe, we proclaim your glory saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus the Christ to share our fragile humanity. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you opened the path from brokenness to health, from fear to trust, from pride and conceit to reverence for you. Rejected by a world that could not bear the gospel of life, Jesus knew death was near. His head anointed for burial by an unknown woman, Jesus gathered together those who loved him, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And now we gather at this table in response to his commandment to share the bread and the cup of Christ's undying love and to proclaim our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Breathe your Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the universe, upon these gifts that we bring to you, this bread and this cup, ourselves, our souls and bodies, that we may be signs of your love for all the world and ministers of your transforming purpose through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory is yours, creator of all, and we bless your holy name forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that is the light of that life is the light of the world. And a special prayer for those at home who cannot join us here for communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you now in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. These are the gifts of God. For the people of God. Thanks be to God. The blood of Christ shed for all of us. Paul, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Peter, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Debbie, the blood of our the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. And the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Heather, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. Cynthia, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. There's another one. John, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Maggie, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Richard, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Janet, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Fred, the body of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, given for you. Ron, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you.
Let us pray. Eternal God, in you we find peace beyond all telling. May we who share in this heavenly banquet be instruments of your peace on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. As we go forth as God's co-creators in new and wondrous ways, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love, today and always. Amen. Go in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.